Welcome back to the Delaware Way and welcome back to the Delaware Way. Gene Peacock, who is the director of the Brandywine Zoo, and he brought along with him Francis Borgers, who is the on-site program coordinator. And they also brought along Boris, who has suddenly become active. Uh, <laughs> tell us about Boris. So Go Boris ahead. is a blood python, and they're found in regions of southeastern Asia. They're a snake that hangs out in kind of mud puddly sort of areas, so that's what he's trying to do right now go find another comfortable place that he might want to hide and wait for food to come by. So he's trying to get away from you right now? Well, maybe from you, I'm not sure. Or me. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, welcome to the show. Uh, um, we aim to please. <laughs> you, you take him out to schools? Yeah, and, uh, Boris is one of our education animals, so all of the staff will take him out for education programs on zoo site, and then he also participates in our traveling zoo. So he's one of the animals that'll go to schools, to so some he's of not the festivals. Dangerous at all. No, he's he's so used to being handled and so used to being around people that he makes a great education animal and he's a, a great ambassador for snakes. Francis, what does he eat? Great question. At the zoo, we feed him uh, frozen, rethawed rats, so he doesn't get live prey at the zoo. Oh, just like in the wild. Yeah, exactly. Frozen, rethawed rats. Just pop it right out there for him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so in the wild, he would eat almost anything that he could fit into his body. So anything that would come up to that mud puddle where he's kind of hanging out. Uh, things the size of like big rats, um, rabbits, he would eat birds if he could get a hold of them, possibly other snakes, lizards, that kind of stuff. You're saying, you said he's not a hunter. He just, Not he really a hunter, he's an ambush predator. So he's gonna wait in that mud puddle, wait for something to come and drink from the puddle, or just be near it and he will then attack. Now I know um, we have two animals today, mm -hmm. and the, these two animals normally they, we, you can't bring them out. You together. can't bring them out together. We have we have a, a really special animal coming out later, but when you're handling uh, snakes because they use their sense of smell to find their prey, right. you usually want to handle the snakes first, or they'll smell the other animal on you, and they may they may think it's dinner time and that would cause a strike. And we don't want that to happen, so as a safety precaution, we'll handle the reptiles, the snakes first, then you'll wash your hands real well, and then you'll move on to the next animal. So that would cause, it would bite you? They could. Um, a lot of times they'll have a fake strike to make you bite back off, but um, if you work with reptiles long enough, you may get a bite, and when these guys bite you, you, you know. It, He's got teeth? It'll bleed. He has teeth. They have uh, rows of very sharp, needle-like teeth, and their jaw will unhinge. So when they eat something, these teeth, they all face backwards. They'll unhinge their jaw and they'll work it down their throat. And then when they're through, they'll pop their jaw back in place. As much as I would have loved to have seen that, <laughs> I am so glad that we separated two animals. Yeah. Let's, why don't we bring out the other one? All right, all right. we'll do that. We'll say bye to Boris. Bye-bye, Boris. <laughs> and now we want to introduce you to the other animal of the two we needed to separate. Meet Lady May, and, and what is Lady May? She is an American kestrel, so she is a native bird to Delaware and all throughout the United States. And what is a kestrel? What family is that? The kestrel is the smallest species of the falcon. They're a raptor or a bird of prey. And you'll, you'll find these guys living, they'll, they'll live in the woods, but usually on the edge of an open field because they like to hunt the mice and the, the small animals you'd find in fields. And um, originally you found them all over Delaware, but their populations have been in decline. And Why so, is that? Uh, it's a combination of loss of habitat, um, predators. Uh, we've had a you know rebound in peregrine falcons and larger birds of prey. So they've taken over the nesting areas and they'll they'll you know take the young birds. So we just don't have the population. Um, the biggest cause though is just loss of habitat. She's beautiful though. I yeah, mean, she's a she's, she's a great one of the bird. most beautiful birds I've seen. Now, how long? How old is she now? She's right around four years old. So she's an adult? She's is, a full-grown mm -hmm. adult, yes. And you were saying you don't even know how long they're supposed to live. Yeah, so they're still doing a lot of research on some of these birds in the wild, and some of them, she's very small, so it's a little bit harder for them to watch them, but they do have like tracking systems that they can put on their backs and like watch where they go and things that they do. But only within the past few years have the batteries for those been better so that they last a longer time. It's always amazing. You think that we know everything about everything. And, and every time we bring an animal in, sometimes you go, well, we mm -hmm. just don't know uh, because no studies have been done. Yeah, I guess. And, and even just with the kestrel, they're, they're finding new species of animals all over the world, um, in particular Southeast Asia. They'll find new species, they found a species of deer and a species of pig not long ago. And right here in our own country, they'll find animals, uh, in particular frogs, insects, salamanders, that they thought were extinct, mm -hmm. you know, decades ago. Uh, quickly, what's going on at the zoo this month? Well, coming up uh, in May, we have a full slate of uh, programs coming up. 
Uh, school groups are coming out, but summer camps kick off at the beginning of summer. Very popular, so we, right? Yeah, our camps are filling up, so we encourage if you want to have uh, your child attend summer camp, you need to contact the zoo so we can get them signed up. And uh, we're bringing back for the summer, we're bringing back our family fun nights and our members nights in June. So we have that coming up. And um, just in general, uh, you know, a lot we of new lot. things. The monkeys are back. May is on, uh, Lady May is on exhibit. I so want a monkey in her. here. You told me before <laughs> that you don't want a monkey on this set, but I, I still, I think it'd be great. We, you know, we, we could follow it. We have, oh. it'd be like NFL films. We, we, we can get the shots. Thanks a lot. Thanks, I Larry. appreciate it, Gene. Thanks for coming again. in. Francis, nice to meet you. Lady May, nice to meet you. Say goodbye to Boris. Francis Borgers, the on-site program director, and of course Gene Peacock, who's been here several times as a regular, who is the director of the Brandywine Zoo. That wraps it up for the Delaware Way. Stick around for another thing.